production sports car is basically a sports car that was made in a number of and in excess of a thousand in a factory. The cars are pretty, pretty much uh, production based but uh, they have some modification freedoms. Well, production sports cars are those that were developed and uh, on the road generally in the last 30 years, I suppose, 40 years. It's a car that's quite highly modified for racing because, as you're probably aware, road cars don't stand up to racing very well at all. So it's a modified production car such as Datsun 240Zs, uh, some of the Porsches, uh, some of the MGs and Triumph TR8s and uh, um, a lot of other. And there's a Robnals in there as well and other uh, Cobra replicas. Um, as well running. So we've got a great mix of cars actually. It's a category that enables us to drive high performance vehicles uh, with a lot of power to weight ratio and uh, have lots of fun with them. Yeah. And there you can see the cars on the grid ready for the sports car feature race here at Sandown, round one of the Victorian State Circuit Racing Championship. Time to have a look at the grid. And let's take a look at how they're going to line up on the grid. Kane Rose is on pole position in the Melbourne's cheapest cars, Porsche 911 GT3. Alongside him, Brett Bedgood in the GT2. Then comes Graham Cook, also in a Porsche, another GT3. Matthew Turnbull, also GT3, as is Ross Lilly. He's out of position number five in a Porsche GT3 Cup car. The first of the non-Porsches is Ted Hugelin in the Ferrari 360 GT. Then comes Greg Hayson in the Nissan 200SX. Peter Pontas is next, also in a Porsche, a GT3 Cup car. Fraser Kirshner in the Porsche 993 911 is next. Then Paul Crescetti in the DRB Cobra, followed by Michael Lentini, also in a Porsche GT3 Cup car. And rounding out the top 12, Murray Carter in the big Chev Corvette. And it's a smaller than usual field in the sports cars today. We've had a high rate of attrition. Unfortunately, some of our quicker cars are out, including Mort Fitzgerald in the MG GT V8, also Tom Hutchison in the TR8. So there's a couple of, uh, couple of cars that uh, would be expected to give these Porsches a little bit to think about. But unfortunately, both of them succumbing to engine problem earlier in the weekend. As they go racing and the front two cars move away, Brett Bedgood and Kane Rose. And as we go back and have a look at them on the main straight, it's Bedgood who's got the jump and heads down to turn one for the first time. Brett Bedgood in the now all-black GT2. Then comes the GT3 of Kane Rose. Melbourne's cheapest cars is next. Then comes Matthew Turnbull. He's come through passing a couple of the cars, including, uh, including Cook, as they head through the gloom. And as you can see, this was the last race of the day. It's a very, very... Very dark and very damp Sandown International. Track is dry at the moment, but very, very cold. And as you can see, very, very, very dark. Makes it hard to see that particular car. Talk about the stealth bomber. The, uh, the matte, it's almost a matte black of Brett Bedgood. Not sure what's happened there, why the, uh, why the car has been repainted, but uh, looks very good. I'm sure he'd like some sponsors on it as he goes through Jetstar Corner down in Dandenong Road for the first time. And he continues to lead. This is the battle between the cars of uh, car number 36, that's the car of, uh, of Fontas and Paul Crochetti in the DRB. DRB Cobra, and uh, as, Paul, as we said earlier, for Paul, this is his uh, first race, and that car is gonna be a real handful. The interesting thing about the DRB Cobra there, the, uh, the, the Gazgep car, is that it's powered by a 5.8 litre engine. Normally, the cars that we've seen in the state series, such as uh, Lyndon Punchon's Rob Nell and, of course, George Vitovic's uh, Python, have been powered by the 5 litre engine, but this is a 5.8 litre, so uh, slightly more powerful. But uh, a real handful. And as you can see, Crochetti right on the tail now of, of Fontas as he, they go through turn, turn four and up the back straight once again. Let's have a look at the power of the DRB, see if he can catch up with this Porsche. Doesn't look like it at the moment. The Porsche dives away out of the corner. Very good under acceleration. But let's see what the top end's like for this DRB Cobra. Up over the hill once again. They go down through the S's into Dandenong Road. Fontas still in front in the Porsche. Then comes Crochetti. And behind him, you can just saw a, see the red flash there of the car of Murray Carter. That's the, uh, the Corvette, as our leaders go through once again. 
This is the car of Ted Hugel, the silver, po uh, silver Ferrari. The 360 GT car. And you saw Crescetti, and there goes Carter. And I think that's Fraser Kirshner in the silver. Porsche 993, 911. Going through also. So Carter is uh, is now catching Crescetti somewhat. So it's good to see Murray back in the Corvette. As a lot of people would know, Murray uh, made his name in a Corvette special back in the 1950s and 60s. The Carter Corvette, one of the most famous Australian specials. And it's great to see Murray still racing after all these years and back in a, in a Corvette. So, of course, back in the 70s, he was one of the heroes of touring car racing, a contemporary of Peter Brock and Alan Moffat. Raced Ford Falcons for a number of years, GDHO, XAs, XDs. And eventually transferred to, uh, to, to Mazdas and then uh, a, a Sierra. That's Greg Hasem's car, the Nissan 200SX. But there we can see that car of Murray Carter, very good looking car. It's had, a, it's had a lot of modification since we last saw it in the Nations Cup. And he's closing right up on Crescetti now. Here's our third place man, Matthew Turnbull, going through Dandenong Road. So they're spread out at the front just a little bit. Porsche's dominating this event. We would certainly hope to... Uh, once again with Crescetti and Carter right on his tail now. Numbers down quite a bit on this event, but we would be hoping that at, uh, at future rounds, at both here and Phillip Island, that we will see uh, more cars coming into the, uh, to the series. And, of course, get back some of those cars. We're also missing uh, the car of, uh, of Ross Nickel as well, the, uh, the Abbey Sounds Roaring 40s GT40 replica. And, uh, and that's a shame. That's a very pretty car. Also, uh, Rob Whitwell in the uh, Projects Development Consultants V8 MGB hardtop, that beautiful blue car built by K&A Engineering. That's another very quick car. So, as I said earlier, we've lost a few of the quicker cars, the, the British cars, the MGs of uh, Whitwell and Mort Fitzgerald, and uh, also the Triumph TR8 of Tom Hutchison. Back on the main straight again. We're now looking back at this battle, and it looks like Carter's through on Crescetti, so... Missed that, so Murray Carter has come through and has taken Paul Crescetti, and now assumes that position. There he goes through there. There's Crescetti. And Carter has a bit of a gap already as Crescetti goes up the bow. And there's smoke there. That's Carter. Carter is out. So Murray Carter, not sure exactly what's happened there, but that could be an engine. Whatever it was, there was a puff of smoke, and that was the end of Murray Carter's Corvette. So bad news, disappointing news for Murray, but uh, good news for this guy. Crescetti now takes over that position again. So that's uh, very good news for Paul. He's managing to keep it on the straight and narrow. And as you can see, it's a very dry track now. There was a lot of lying water around a little bit earlier, but uh, the other categories have sort of squeegeed, squeegeed it away. There's Hasem, and he's about to have a lap put on him by our second place man, Kane Rose. You can see the incredible speed differential there between the GT3 of Rose and that car of Hasem. Also down to Dan Nong Road. Oh, having a bit of a problem there was uh, Crescetti, and he stalled it. Can he get going? Yes, he can. So Crescetti moves away, but uh, very lucky not to uh, not to go off into the sand trap down there. Very fast part of the circuit. As our leader goes through that uh, spot of Dan Nong Road once again, here's our second place man, the car of Kane Rose. Also coming through is the car of Turnbull. I think it's the car of Kershaw there, the silver Porsche 993. Crescetti goes around. You can see Crescetti, as I said, very inexperienced, taking a, a very different line through Danny Nong Road. And there it is, the last lap. That's the site that this man will be greeted with as he goes across the line. Brett Bedgood.
comes over the line for the second last time. Second place is Rose, but quite a distance behind. You can see the gap there. Very little chance. Unless Bedgegood makes a mistake, there's probably uh, little doubt that he's going to go on and win this race. Ted Huglin in the 360 GT Ferrari. Good, good job by Ted this weekend. But up the back straight, the Stealth Bomber, the black 911 GT, th uh, GT2 of Brett Bedgegood. Kane Rose in the 911 GT3 is in second position. Then comes Turnbull, also in the GT3. Ross Lilly in that uniquely painted GT3. And then Huglin in fifth place is the first of the uh, non-Porsches in the Ferrari 360 GT. So coming down into Dandenong Road for the final time, it's Brett Bedgegood. Manages to negotiate that problem without any hassles at all. A couple of more corners to go. And in just one moment, he'll come back into our view. There he is, heads now towards the start-finish line. And the last lap board goes in. The chequered flag comes out and greets Brett Bedgegood. Kane Rose will be second. Then comes Matthew Turnbull, followed by Ross Lilly, waiting for Ross to come through. You can see a big gap, the first three over Ross Lilly. There's Ross Lilly going over the line in fourth position. And let's take a look at that result once again. Brett Bedgegood took the win in the Porsche 911 GT2 from Kane Rose, the Melbourne's cheapest cars, Porsche 911 GT3. Matthew Turnbull was next ahead of Ross Lilly. Then Ted Huglin in the Ferrari 360 GT. Peter Fontas was next in the Porsche GT3 from Graham Cook, also in a Porsche. Paul Grichetti in the DRB Cos... Cobra, the gas gap car, was next in position number eight, and Fraser Kirshner was the last of our finishers in the Porsche 993. Unfortunately, Murray Carter and Greg Havesom failed to finish. And we'll have more action coming up very soon. You're watching In Pit Lane.